After Buzz TV, starting place to the likes of WWE female superstars Kathy Kelly, Sonya Deville, and Zelina Vega proudly presents Women's Wrestling Weekly, the world's first podcast and YouTube series dedicated exclusively to women's wrestling, featuring all the latest news as well as interviews with top superstars in the industry. And now, After Buzz TV's own gorgeous lady of wrestling, TK Trinidad. <laughs> So you're watching Women's Wrestling Weekly, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. I'm TK Trinidad, a.k.a. the Canadian Assassin. And we have in the house, finally, uh, America's Chocolate sweet Sweetheart, <laughs> a.k.a. Coco Cena, yeah. Evan T. Mac. Evan T. Mac. Yo, what up, girl? I <laughs> miss you, man. Man. I did, girl. You've been doing your thing, though. I've seen you. Let's... Waving that black girl magic wand all over oh, Los Angeles. Flipping it around. Canadian black magic. What up? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. We have an amazing show. We have the star of the week. Um, we're also going to break down some news. But we have nothing but amazing guests that come on the show every single week. And this week is no different. We have the gatekeeper, uh, a.k.a. the pretty badass, the current champion for Ring of Honor, Women of, Ho women of Honor. Mm -hmm. We have Kelly Klein in the house. Yo. What's up, Kelly? Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks Thank for coming on. I appreciate it. So um, what, what, what does it feel like, since both of us have never been champions in the ring, what nope. does it feel like to be uh, the current champion for Ring of Honor? Um, it feels right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it feels, um, I think just because it was such a long time coming, uh, in a way, it's, it's kind of like when you are really hungry and then you're so hungry that it's like you you don't you can't you can't even feel it anymore mm -hmm. um so it kind of got to that point where it was like i'm waiting and waiting and then it's kind of like all right it's time you know mm -hmm. and um so then when it happened it was almost so surreal because uh it, it gotten past that point where i was like okay it's time yeah um, <laughs> so like you put in so, the work and you know you're ready and it's just like okay now now you guys need to recognize me. Yep, now we wait. <laughs> so um, now what's the, the game plan as far as um, matches coming up and uh, defending the ch title? I've seen in some interviews you're like, I'm going to, whoever wants to challenge me, I'm here, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's the, the game plan for that? Well, I am making every match a championship match because I wrestle every match like it's a championship match. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that's how I approach it. So that's what it should be. And I want that to really attract the best of the best. And I want it to compel Ring of Honor to, um, to give me the, the best opponents. I don't want any wasted time. I don't want any wasted matches. Mm. Um, I want everything to be raising the stakes and to be for the championship and to, um, to, to be something that elevates the championship and myself and my opponent. Um, so that's that's where we need to find really the best people out there. Now you said um, one of your goals, like 2019 goals, was to develop as an athlete and um, interact with more like fan base and stuff like that. Have you been accomplishing that now that we're you know a couple weeks in? I have. I have. Um, I've I've talked to some people and done more research about how to better utilize media and social media. And I finally went and looked up my login for YouTube so that I could <laughs> uh, upload a video. <laughs> so now now that it's um, it's actually not that hard to do, I just had to go you know look up my password and that was the hassle, but did that part. So um, now I'm looking forward to um, having that as just another outlet for some content and another way to to reach my fans and for them to reach me so what are your thoughts on like when, how women are being represented throughout like different promotions nowadays like what do you what comes to mind i think that we are really we've been it for a long time in the midst of this revolution but now um it's kind of it's kind of at a point where we have to be careful that the revolution doesn't become a buzzword and a marketing ploy. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen that um, in, in a lot of situations, particularly with women across culture, when um, you think of just feminism in general, and then it becomes its own machine. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to see that happen to the women's revolution to where, oh, now it's this, you know, it's this catchy thing. And it's, 
this marketing ploy and it's a gimmick um, because it, it really needs to continue to be organic and genuine. And um, so that's just something we have to look out for and make sure that uh, we all remember why we started and what we are striving for and keep just keep our eye on that. Yeah, I, I, I think just watching, you know, certain things happen uh, throughout different promotions, mm -hmm. just seeing it become not a first, but it's just like, oh, this has been happening. Yeah. It's no longer the first women's whatever, the first women's whatever. And it's just normal f to have a main event, women being the main event, et cetera. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. And yeah, I definitely agree with you, not it being a gimmick. Right. It's like, oh, we're going to do this because this is the in thing to do now, but we're going to go back to you know what we were doing before. Um, but you are a very uh, busy woman. You um, are a pre preschool music teacher. <laughs> Adorable. Yes, yes, I am. So how do you balance? <laughs> and then you're also married, correct? Yes. So you're married, you're a preschool mu music teacher, you are a wrestler, and now you just added YouTube in the mix, which is a whole nother <laughs> part-time job. How do you balance all of that? Yeah. It can be a struggle. Uh, <laughs> right now I am battling some sort of uh, cold that I think I've had for like a month. So if that tells you anything, oh boy. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's just, there have been times where I've, I've not always been good at it and I can overextend myself, but I have people around me that um, sometimes will step in and say, uh, even at the preschool, I, this week I had some people say, hey, you're always here for the kids and that's great, but you have to take care of yourself and we can let you go home a little early today and get some rest. And normally that's not something I would do, but I thought, you know what, I should go home and <laughs> go take a nap so um having that good support group and the right people that um sometimes know what the right thing might be for you when you don't want to see that is something that's really important and then having those people also be patient when sometimes i i don't get it right definitely being married uh, my husband has to uh share me i'm very um over ambitious maybe mm -hmm. i can overextend myself and i want to be involved in a lot of things and i have to remind myself sometimes that it's okay to say no to things and um so that's something that he he has to has to deal with and um sometimes remind me that hey you don't have to do all of these things right and uh, yeah and, and find better ways to prioritize my time and sometimes things are just not the best value not the best use of my time um so it's it's just it's there's no right way to do it probably it's always a learning curve but i'm just i, I just keep trying <laughs> nice now do your do your students know that you are a champion like how do you do you... My, <laughs> my students right now don't because they're so young uh, -huh. uh but parents and other teachers do so um, one of the moms will come in and drop her two two year old off, and she'll say, "Hey, have a good day, champ." And, um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> things like that. So it's it's kind of funny because the, my kids are they're two, and I'm just I'm Miss Kelly, or some of them call me my Kelly, my Kelly, my Kelly, and they just have <laughs> no concept of that. I'm just um, you know I'm they they get the side of me that is the snuggles and, um, you know, I, I, maybe if they, if they realized this is why I have the stamina to keep up with them and why mm -hmm. I don't, um, you know, let them run all over me. I have the confidence. It's, it's kind of interesting how wrestling can really contribute to how I'm able to work with the kids as a preschool teacher and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um, when, I'm in the wrestling ring and I'm like, you know what? I've had a kid walk up to me with poop on their hand while another <laughs> kid is, um, you know, running headlong into the wall and another kid is, is crying about something and I have to keep calm and take care of them all. So anything in the ring is kind of like, oh, this is, this is fine. This is not, this is not a big deal. <laughs> so, so definitely like the, the preschool teacher is like, it's harder than wrestling is what you're trying to say. It's different. <laughs> it's hard in a different way. Yeah. I love it. Um, 
So, I guess, so, you, so you make your own wrestling gear, right? Yes. Yes, I do. Like, what do you like? What inspirations do you draw from? Why do you come up with that? Are you just like, I need to throw some more? Wait, wait, pause, pause, pause. Yeah, she like, she like knits and stuff. Like, that's not, <laughs> that's nothing to just graze. I was glossing over it. Sewing. I gave it like a slow. I gave a slow pause. I'm making wrestling gear. That's like another. Where do you find I know, time? It's incredible. That's incredible. That's that amazing. Is a that is another thing that sometimes, um, sometimes I'll, I'll have to really think about planning ahead and wow. figuring out when, uh, if, if there's some gear that I want for something uh, that I, I really have to plan ahead and figure out when I can get that together. Um, and then there are other times where uh, I have to just prioritize and maybe, um, mm. maybe my new gear is not as important as my workout is mm -hmm. that time. And, um, wow. but it's, it's gotten better, um, over the years. One of the things with sewing is that sometimes sewing machines can just decide not to cooperate for Facts. absolutely no reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. So even when you think you've got it all planned out and it's like, I've got plenty of time and I've got my stuff you know, ready to go and my, my idea and, and then you're doing it. And then for some reason, the sewing machine just keeps like cutting the thread mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and you don't know why. And you just take it apart and put it back together. And now do you use knows. patterns or do you, do you freehand it? I freehand it. Wow. I... You need <laughs> beyond, forget Free. the bell. You yeah. need something like <laughs> The super, like, this is crazy. And you deal with infants? I, I was hanging out with my friend's son who is two, and I was done for the count after two hours. And I don't know how you... Like, Unlimited energy. I'm just saying, this is crazy. <laughs> I, I will say there, there are days where I'm, I'm standing in the middle of the room, and they're just, you know, running circles around, and I'm going, well, it's, it's your classroom now. You guys are in <laughs> So now you said uh, Jazz uh, was one of the, the wrestlers who inspired you. Um, she's, you know, back at it. We actually had her um, before she made her, um, not debut match, would it be like, um, like a... reboot for yeah. the NWA championship? Return. Yes. Return. Um, return, thank you. Um, do you want to have a match with her? And, and if so, on Don't. top of Jazz, who else would you want to have matches with? I absolutely want to have a match with her. And the fact that you know, she and I both have something to put at stake, I think oh. lends itself to quite an interesting be... uh, encounter. Uh -huh. um, she's definitely somebody that when when I saw that she decided to become active again, I was kind of like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, when she was on the show, um, she cut it. She cut a promo while she was on the show, yeah, and we, we were, were like, just like, we were like, we were scared. I thought she was cutting a promo against me. Like, Jazz, <laughs> she's, I don't want no problems, Jazz. She's amazing. And then yeah. her, her promo for NWA um, for the belt, when I think there was a, against Penelope Ford, yes. was amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad. I think that would be, be awesome. two belts. Yeah, man, champion versus champion. That would be good. Yeah. Somebody needs to I, I love that, that passion, and I think that's something that, you know, when maybe when people talk about an it factor, um, that's the kind of thing where it's just that, that intensity and that passion. So she's somebody that I would love to get in the ring with. Another person that I've always really wanted to work with. And um, again, they, then they were saying, okay, well, I'm done in the ring. And now I'm just hoping for another shot is Gail Kim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she's been dabbling, because I know she was behind, um, like, behind the scenes helping the girls out. But then she kind of was the referee. And it's like, is she coming back, like, almost like Daniel yeah. Bryan style? I'm keeping my eye on her, because now I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You know, maybe, maybe she's not, you know. Officially, officially. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what would you say to, like, a young female wrestler that was just starting out and she, like, wanted to be in your position? What would you say to her if you can give her any advice? I would say take every learning opportunity you can. Um, oh man, and it's as a as a woman in wrestling, especially you have to surround yourself with a good support system, mm. and I think that it can be really important to have people that are outside of wrestling, um, whether it's your mom 
or a best friend or a sister or a brother or somebody who can see things uh, from a different perspective. So I have uh, my friend who has really no reference or concept of wrestling other than through me. And when I can get sometimes really bogged down in just the, the goals and the obstacles and I'll sort of be telling her something and I'll just gloss over like, yeah, I was in this magazine and she's like, wait a minute, that's a, that's a big deal. You know? And I'm like, well, and I'm telling her why it's not a big deal. And she's like, well, you're my only friend that's in a magazine. So uh, <laughs> kind of big deal. to have that perspective from the outside when, when inside the industry, we can just get so laser focused and bogged down and not be able to step back. Um, having someone else that we can kind of see through their eyes is I think really healthy. Wow. Now, um, you have wrestled in Japan. Is there anywhere else that you want to wrestle or you have time to wrestle? <laughs> <laughs> um, I love wrestling in Japan and I would love to wrestle there again. I also, um, just, just so that I can say I've done it, I would really like to wrestle in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then um, I keep seeing these things about people going to wrestle in Australia and I've always wanted to go to Australia. So if I could wrestle and visit Australia, that would be amazing. Um, but I, I think there's something really, really interesting about wrestling in front of audiences that are just hungry for wrestling. Mm -hmm. right. um, so when I got to wrestle in Taiwan, um, that was a crowd who had not seen an all women's event ever. And they were just so happy that we were there. Uh, so when I see things like the events in China and um, just different areas that don't get it a lot or haven't gotten it. Those would be um, places I would love to be able to bring wrestling to and be a part of that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, um, are there plans? Like, do, uh, some people are great multitasking and being busy. Um, are there plans as, or are there hopes to essentially become a full-time wrestler? Mm -hmm. Or are you, or the goal was where you are right now, being able to do two things that you love? Well, in a way, I was a full-time wrestler, and I just always pick up other things because if I have any time, I just I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. And I I had this time, and and then I got the opportunity to um, teach at this music-based preschool, which was a perfect fit for me. And it's so it's just so fulfilling. It's something I really love to do. Um, a friend once asked me. Uh, Kelly, if you ever didn't have anything to do, like, what would you do? And I said, well, I'd find something to do. And yeah. that's, that's kind of my thing. So it's, I think it's really important. And I've said this um, before for any wrestler to be well-rounded and not to only be taking in wrestling. Mm -hmm. So um, to be in a position where I'm able to fulfill myself in other areas, whether I'm coaching softball or teaching preschool or being involved in, um, you know, theater or just anything. Um, I think that that can really lend to how I, um, present myself in wrestling, whether it's in the ring or outside of the ring. Um, and then you just, you have so much more to bring to the table. Uh, but it's also an opportunity to, um, like I said, be fulfilled in other ways, but also just kind of step back and not be, um, not be totally immersed in wrestling. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, you know, there, it's great when people are passionate and love it and I mm. do, but I also think it's, it's healthy and important to be able to step back and step outside of it. And if you have other things, um, that you're able to be involved in, then you're more likely to be able to have those connections with other people and other things. Yeah, it's de definitely, it's definitely important with that. Wow. Like I said, what, what do you do though when you have some off time? Like you and hubby do date night. What y'all do? Do you relax? Do you just sleep? What do, you, do you do? What do you <laughs> do you, when you have some time to just chill? Yeah, we do date night, but um, we almost have to make ourselves because both of us are so busy that sometimes when we do have some time off, we're kind of like, ooh, we just want to just rest and not go anywhere or do anything but we'll go um you know, see if there's a good movie and go find some good food uh he just took me to see the shen yun ballet 
in New York. Wow. Um, that was something that I've, I've just really been curious about ever since it came out. So I, we got to go do that. And then we went to um, dinner at a steakhouse, uh, Spark Steakhouse that is, um, ha has some mafia history, which is something he's really interested in. So well, we find, find things like that we can do. Okay. You said steakhouse. So are you, <laughs> so, okay. So, so folks, <laughs> like you are clearly like you are my superwoman. Um, so wrestler, teacher, sells your own stuff. Mm -hmm. You're married. Cause that's a whole nother job in itself. It is. And then you're also <laughs> saving the environment because you're vegan. So you yes. cook vegan food, but you just yeah. said you were at a steakhouse. So what was, yeah. what, 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 what's yeah. up with that? So, uh, <laughs> one of the things that I, that I really kind of pride myself with and that um, some of my friends I think are very grateful for is that I'm really good at being able to find something to eat anywhere I go. Mm -hmm. um, so we went and they had a, um, this really good like chopped vegetable salad and it had like blanched um, asparagus and broccoli and mushrooms and everything. So I had that and then I had for my entree, they actually had a side that was these um, like button mushroom caps. Oh, nice. And um, I asked him how they were prepared. He said they prepared them in butter and I asked if they would prepare them in oil and he said that was fine. So um, that was, I had, that's what I had for my entree. And then for dessert, uh, they had a fresh um, fruit bowl and fresh berries with um, vanilla ice cream, which um, I asked them to put on the side. And my husband um, had some of the ice cream with his cheesecake. <laughs> so, <laughs> So yeah, I was able, it was pretty funny though because the the server was like, um, "So you want the the mushrooms? That's it. No entree." I'm like, yep, that's <laughs> that's what I want. But it was really good and it worked. And so your we both, you know got what we wanted. And your husband is a meat eater. Oh yes. <laughs> so how do you do you yeah, do you cook meat for him? Because I've uh, hadn't I haven't eaten meat in quite some time and I don't even know if I know how to cook chicken anymore like I <laughs> so do you still like prepare milk or do I mean I haven't for a while um we had been uh we kind of have this ritual where we, where we would get up and make breakfast together and um just because of the way the scheduling was I would get up and I would like put his turkey bacon on the pan um but now because our schedules have changed we'll get up and we'll both have our breakfast bowl, which is a plant-based bowl. And then he'll go to the gym and he'll have his eggs and turkey bacon later when I'm at work. Okay. So um, I haven't had to uh, encounter that, that issue <laughs> recently, um, which is good. Cause I'm the, the longer I've been, um, following this lifestyle, the more uncomfortable I am with all of, you know, just the, the preparation and, um, mm. yes. shopping and everything. So it's, I'm kind of like, yeah, if I don't have to do it or be around it, that's, that's better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My dad has been a vegetarian all my life. And like, if my mom didn't pick up meat, like we weren't having meat that week. Like mm -hmm. it was just kind of like, well, I'm not touching mm -hmm. it. So, and yeah. then I'm at the point where it's like, if you ask me to cook any form of meat thing I think I'm I'm a lost cause at this, at this point so <laughs> and I you know he's um hasn't asked me to so oh, that's good. I, he's he's really really respectful of um of you know that that that's my choice so when we do date night sometimes uh he'll say oh do you want to go to this restaurant and before I've even you know said anything he's already looked up the menu and said oh they have this you know, this is their vegan entree, and nice. he's already vetted nice. it for me. So he's he's thinking about that and considerate of it, which that I really appreciate. a good appreciate. husband right good there. Man, good man. All right. How long have you guys been married for? A year and a half. All right. Oh, fresh marriage, too. Yeah. <laughs> fresh marriage? Fresh. It's still fresh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so now you essentially got into wrestling because you were part of a, a rock band, and mm -hmm. um, you're inviting people to your uh, event, and the person you invited is like, I'll come to the event if you come to my wrestling match, and that's kind of how you got into wrestling. Um, is there any plans of, of like releasing another album, or maybe even like a kid's album with the kids in the background or something like that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, maybe. I, I would love to do that. I've been thinking about, um, and now that I've found my YouTube uh, <laughs> password, um, I was thinking about, uh, sharing some videos of some of my circle time songs that we do okay. um, 
<laughs> some some that are old classics and then some that I just have made up. Um, so, and then I, I have, you know, a few of my longtime fans that know about my musical background nice. um, and some who have heard me sing karaoke and things like that are always requesting songs. So I might start um, uploading uh, some some homemade karaoke videos on YouTube just for for a good time. <laughs> oh my God! Well, I mean, that's how the Beeb started. It's true. So true. you can add, you know, not only is she a wrestler, she like sings around. Oh my gosh, you I don't, you making me tired. I had uh, some people requested Bohemian Rhapsody, and I think that'll be that'll hilarious. Be oh so my gosh. I'm probably gonna do that one first. And if you, even if you have the kids do that one too, um. <laughs> So adorable. That would be that would be awesome. Um, so now, what's the game plan for the rest of the year? So you uh, had like your 2019 goals as far as um, social media to be more more athletic. Um, as far as the championship, you're always putting on the line every time you have a match. Um, any other plans that you have wrestling wise for 2019? I really want to wrestle more um, more people that I have not faced before. Um, and I also, I got an opportunity to go down to um, Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum and train with him a little bit. Nice. I've had wow. opportunities to train with um, a few different people like Rip Rogers. I trained with Les Thatcher. And um, something that I've, I've really wanted to do for a long time is go on sort of a training pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think that's something that I would really like to do this year is... Um, once I, I kind of get situated to where I can take take that kind of a trip to to start mapping that out to where I can go and um, get into different different training facilities with different trainers and and put some time in with some new people. Nice. I heard. Um, oh my gosh! I think it's Kylie Ray. Um, she was at Booker T's facility, oh. mm -hmm. and she was telling me about it, and it was just. It's like I wanted to go. Right. So it seemed like it was such a great experience. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I might put that put that on the list as well. Yeah, I got my <laughs> eye on her too. So okay, oh, all right. right, oh my, mm -hmm. stay right, woke, then. girl. She's coming um, for you. Now, is there any um, kind of? I don't know. Twenty nineteen is a little bit different because it used to be like the holy grail was WWE. Yeah. But because of where we are, especially for women wrestlers, mm -hmm. there's so many different opportunities. So, is there any promotions that you want to work with um, that you haven't worked with before, or that you might want to go back to um, that you're thinking about? Like lucha, lucha. Yeah, that that would be really interesting. Um, just because it with that different approach um, of just that that kind of like story and the more surreal, um, I think kind of storytelling style, mm -hmm. uh, would be a lot of fun. I, I've found recently I've, um, I've become more open to all of the different things that wrestling can be. Right. And, um, I think for a long time, whether it was just my own personal preference, um, as well as some of my trainers preferences and opinions, um, I felt like wrestling like needed to be different things. And now I'm starting to, to really, and, and we're all seeing all these examples where mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just kind of finally being able to wrap my head around the fact that, um, it, it can be so many things. And, and I, I got that and I was aware of it before, but, um, I sort of didn't want to like think about it cause there was still stuff that I'm like, yeah, but that's just, I don't get it. Right. Um, but now I don't want to just be aware of these things. I want to actually sort of experience and embrace and really understand some of those things a little bit more. Um, so that's where I'm at, where I'm not just acknowledging it and accepting it. I, I want to be like, okay, but now like maybe let me, let me try it. Let me see what that's all about. So um, that would be something that would be, would be really cool. And just um, learning about these different kind of, philosophies and approaches yeah and that, another one to consider too is um wow like just mm -hmm. just you already have <laughs> you already have your storyline yeah. like you're a teacher <laughs> like they they don't even need to they just just put you out like you already have it there and um from speaking to several people from wow i i, I think it's just a really great place for women 
Um, another yeah. a good, another yeah. good um, promotion that's going to be coming up too. So I mean that might be a consideration as well. Um, yeah, and that's one that looks like a lot of fun and just like a totally different approach. Mm -hmm. um, and now, um, has there been any talks with WWE, or, or are you? Is that even a consideration? I I would consider any anything. Mm -hmm. um, but like we talked about kind of having the flexibility with my schedule now mm -hmm. is uh, something that I really like. Yep. So, you know, I, I don't know because who knows a friend of mine said, you know, you could, you can stand on your head for a year. So it's kind of like, maybe I could always try different things. Um, and wait you know, for, <laughs> for however long. Yeah. What you mean by that? What you mean by you can stand on <laughs> yeah, your head? I was like, wait year? a minute. Um, I'm not familiar with that yeah. term. So just saying that if if I tried um, a company that maybe wasn't the best fit for me, I wouldn't have to stay there forever. Oh, but gotcha. You know, just kind of oh. get through it for however long, but um, but you don't know un unless you try it. So um, I'm gonna take that one now. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just kind of <laughs> like okay, well I could, but but you don't know um, until you really kind of give it a shot. So right, that's true. Sometimes it fits. I think for everybody that just the scenario is different for me um, right now, being able, like being in the scenario I'm in where I'm able to teach and do these different things uh, where I'm at right now is really good. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also in a place where uh, I can always go back to teaching. So um, I think this year I am going to be um, balancing in a way that is more, um, certainly more geared toward wrestling and, and putting more of my time toward wrestling mm -hmm. uh, than I am in the other things. So that would always be um, be something I'd be open to. Nice, but I, I definitely respect, I was talking to somebody about that yesterday where, um, I don't know if you saw Crazy Witch Asians, but the mother in the movie Michelle, said, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's the mother in the movie pretty much said that North Americans, they follow their dreams and it's okay to do that, but they like leave everything else in the waste. Like who's, you know, who's going to be paying the bills? Who's going to help to take care of the family and all this other stuff. And I really love your approach because it's just kind of like you're, you have these passions and it seems like, and obviously I'm not like, you know, in, in your business like that, but it seems <laughs> like, you know, you're not one of these almost starving artists. Like I'm going to do all this, but you're very good at the things that you are doing. Like you are, you're able to make it work and that's really commendable opposed to, you know, I'm going to be living on the street and then trying to, trying to wrestle. It's like, well, how are you going to pay for wrestling school? I don't know. I don't know. You know, yeah, so my goal. <laughs> so yeah, I, and that's something that everybody, you know, I don't get to make that choice for anybody and they don't get to make that choice for me. Mm -hmm. And there have been times where I've, you know, slept in my car and I've didn't, you know, done different things. Um, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's everybody's choice, like how they want to go about it. And right. for somebody, if that's like, that's what gets them going, um, then fine. If that's how they want to do it. And, um, so I, I, you know, I, I, I think that when I see people who, um, will say things or post things like, well, you have to, you know, skip your anniversaries and this and that. And, you know, it's like, well, no, you don't have to, right. um, if that's what they want to do and that's how they did it and they're happy with that, that's fine. Um, if somebody else doesn't want to, that's fine too. Uh, but at the end of the day, all of these people, myself included, just have to accept what we get out of it based on the, the route we chose. We make our choices and mm -hmm. um, then we, we get what we get. Right. Awesome. I like that. Me too. She's just Superwoman 2019. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, before we uh, get out of here, we're going to hit you with some uh, rapid hot tags. Women's okay. wrestling rapid hot tags. All right, so here we go. Always early or always late? Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Last person you text? Last person I text? My husband, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, if you were to listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, ben Folds. Okay. Um, if you, uh, who's your favorite um, wrestler, female or male? Natty. Oh, oh I do like Natty, fellow Canadian. Oh. Uh, what is the one thing you love about yourself? My personality. <laughs> <laughs> Dream dinner guest. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh. That's, ooh, I don't know. It's tough. 
that's tricky. Dead or alive. I was not prepared. <laughs> Okay, not for that one. Okay, no, no, no problem. <laughs> come no back, problem. We'll come back. We'll come back that one. Um, so who would uh, play you in a movie? Sandra Bullock. Nice. Okay. Last show you binge watched? Oh, um, Sabrina, maybe. <laughs> oh, I think that's on. It's on Netflix, Netflix, right? Um, mm -hmm. if you were on uh, death row, what would be your last meal? Okay, people get mad at me, but. I would not eat a last meal. I would donate it because that sounds, that just seems wasteful to me. Oh, wow. But in well. the spirit of the game, wow. <laughs> in the spirit of the game, uh -huh. uh, it would be one of my mom's uh, recipes, either the Klein spaghetti or um, a casserole that she made when I was little. She said the Klein spaghetti. Adorable. And then and then I never thought about it. It is kind of wasteful. Because you, yeah, you, you about to die. I might have to throw that question just out of, out, out of the mix. Like I like that she would donate her meal, though, to a nice person. <laughs> I know. Then it's like, why are you in jail? You're donating your meal. You're too I know, nice. You're too nice. <laughs> well, thank <That> you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, like I said, um, just, it, I know. I know as as women, like we're expected to do all these million things and you know, we're expected to be su superwomen, all this other stuff. And I definitely don't want to put like, oh my gosh, you're you're this, but it's definitely appreciated that in this life that we're living that you can do these things mm -hmm. and you seem happy doing it and it's yeah. just like, you know, you're living your best life. So I definitely appreciate you for being inspirational to all our viewers and listeners and myself included. Thank you so much. No problem. All right. Yo, what up? You know what I mean? <laughs> Evan T. Mac, we're going to hit the, the star of the week real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women's wrestling oh, star goodness. of the week. All right, our Women's Wrestling Star of the Week is former Impact Knockout and third-generation wrestler Tessa Blanchard, who is currently signed to Impact Wrestling, The Crush, Lucha Libre, and Mexico. And wow, Tessa made her debut in 2014 at Queens of Combat 2 and made her WWE debut in 2014, 16, and 17 as a part of the Mae Young Classic and lost to Kyrie Sang. Kyrie Sang, for some of you guys who don't know, Blanchard made her Lucha Underground debut against Eva Lee in a dark match in 2016. Blanchard had quite a year in 2018. She defeated Mercedes Martinez to win the WSU Championship and later that year defeated Britt Baker, Chelsea Green, and Madison Rain in a four corner survival match event all at All In. Man, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Blanchard made her impact debut that year and defeated Ali and Sue Young in a three way match to win the Knockout Championship. However, at the beginning of 2019, Blanchard lost the championship to Taya Valkyrie with guest referee, the legendary Gail Kim. Blanchard had the longest women's wrestling match in history with a 75-minute Iron Women's match against Mercedes Martinez. 23-year-old Blanchard has held over 20 championships since she started her career. Fun fact, Blanchard was a stunt double for actress Florence Pugh in the movie Fighting With My Family, which is about WWE superstar Paige. She's dope. She's a legend already, and she's a baby. She's a, like four years old, and she's already like a Hall of Famer. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Uh, I was oh, I was on um, former host of the show, Sarah the Rebel show, yesterday, and I was saying that she's essentially changing um, the way. I don't know about men. Um, well, I mean, maybe Cody is, can add to that, but changing the way that women's wrestling and wrestling in general is is taken. She's on all these promotions. 100%. She's all in these promotions with just her name. Hundred percent. No like aliases, whatever. And like I was reading. Tessa Blanc, like, yeah. Boom. And it's like almost the same character in every promotion. It's like take it or leave it. It's incredible. Um, and she, the guts, man. The guts. The the skill level, because not everyone can just do that. Like, right. She still is paving the way for future women, maybe men, to be able to do that. I think she is starting a new blueprint mm -hmm. of how you're supposed, how a wrestler is supposed to wrestle. Uh, not like I said, in WWE is not your only stop, right. not your only goal. You can do other things. Yeah. And she is she twenty championships. Twenty three. Twenty. And like I don't know what where but I don't know where everybody's bag is. I don't know. I I couldn't even tell you what what the first wrestler makes however however um <laughs> it she she reminds me of if you guys are no, don't know this track reference allison felix allison felix um huge track superstar yep. she didn't go through the whole college university she thing not. she forgo her um, her um, scholarship she went to usc but yep. ran pro yep. made her money got all these deals now she's a mom like she's living her best life and then she thinks she's been in maybe four or five different olympics since she was like 17. Yeah, different ways to get to the pot of gold, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not everyone has to follow the same blueprint. You you find what works for you, and 
and, and, and that's what Tessa's doing. Yeah. Like I said, she is, she's going to be that blueprint for a lot of women. Well, the fact she's so young. She's, I'm just a baby. Yeah. And like I said, but she and she's so successful. I think just because of her work ethic, yeah. her talent, she does and she resonates with people too. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to know. Uh, we are in talks of hopefully getting her on the show, but definitely want to know who came up with that idea. Seriously. Meaning that it's like, did she decide that because in the era we are in, she's gonna go this direction, or did she have a team behind her, like mm. her family? And it's like, no, well, you don't really need um, necessary to go straight to WWE. You can do all these things. Like I, I love to know the behind the scenes. Mm to, you know, how she got there. Um, however, our question or our poll question of the week is, in an all-in-out brawl, who do you have? The Beast, who's on WoW, so if you don't know who she is, definitely check her out because she's, she's going places. Yes, she is. Uh, Jazz or China? That's, that's amazing. So you can uh, vote on WPW Weekly on Instagram and on Twitter. Shout out to everybody in the chat, too, by the way, mm -hmm. man. Anybody that comes on the show, we can't do it without you, man. We appreciate you. You know, the, the mayor, the, under, the unofficial mayor, after Buzz, Bosa. Bosa, the GM, Johan Pena, man, Star Drew, and a partridge in a pear tree, man. We appreciate y'all. We do for real. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Uh, we are coming up on um, finishing up or closing out our second uh, season. So if there are any people that you want to see on the show that haven't been on the make show. Yeah, make it happen. Y'all yeah. send a tweet out. Yeah, send a tweet out. Let us, let us know. We do have some. Uh, I've been in talks for season three. So we do have some folks that uh, have been on the show that have done big things that are coming back to the show. So I'm really excited for that. But uh, where can everybody find you, Mr. Oh, Coco Cena? you know, every T, Mac, Instagram, and Twitter, America's Child. Sweetheart, Coco Cena, man, number one John Cena fan of all time. <laughs> Shout out to the goat. He's injured right now. <laughs> I know, man. Uh, getting, just getting older, man. You know, what I mean? getting older. Um, also, shout out to Tony. Tony B. Uh, yeah, definitely. He's he's gonna be uh, coming back soon. So definitely shout out to him. Definitely missed. Um, if you're not following AfterBuzz, you can go on AfterBuzz uh, AfterBuzz on YouTube. Excuse me, YouTube.com/slash AfterBuzz TV and Wrestling. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like button, like button. Also, give us a thumbs up on the episode on iTunes and everywhere that you're listening Five to us. Five stars. Five stars. Nothing less. Um, also, <laughs> like I said, Twitter, and Instagram. Follow us on WPW Weekly. Um, follow After Buzz as well on Twitter and Insta Instagram. Um, we know there are a lot of wrestling podcasts all over the place. A lot. Like, I'm discovering new ones all the, all the real? time. real. And there, there are ones that are actually um, taking our blueprint. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, yeah, talk about that. Um, but. Y'all stop stealing from us. <laughs> but go ahead. Well, I mean, it's, it's a form of flattery, so I don't mind. There, there's only one Coco Cena and one Canadian assassin. Um, but we definitely appreciate you guys for, for tuning in, for checking in, for getting on the social media, for retreating all that good stuff. Yes, yes. And you're the one that makes this show the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. So, until next time, you can follow me on everything at TK Trinidad, but we will see you next week. executive producers Ciao. Kevin Undergaro, Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, producer TK Trinidad. And me, Mark Donica, your voice of AfterBuzz TV Wrestling. We ask you to rate and comment on iTunes, subscribe to AfterBuzz Wrestling on YouTube, and find us on all social media. Thank you for watching Women's Pro Wrestling Weekly. See you next week. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.